Hi, my name is Steve Maruzzi. We're here at the Lars Training Facility. We're here to discuss the Neotherm touchscreen display on the Neotherm commercial boilers. That ranges from 285 up to 850,000. Uh, first off, we're going to start with navigation for a standalone, so a single boiler application, and we'll get into the navigations in a few minutes. One of the first things I want to discuss is when you power up the boiler, it needs to go through its synchronization process. So you'll see the hourglass symbol appear. It's approximately 192 different parameters. And once it's synchronized, you'll now see the home screen. This is the current home screen showing a picture of a solar control. So from the home screen, we can touch on the solar control, and it's going to bring us to the status summary screen. So a few things I want to talk about on the status summary screen. Up the top left corner is the home symbol. So if you were to touch on the home symbol, it'll bring you back to the home screen. Next over is a camera. Uh, so any one of these screens, when we get into configuration, you can actually take a snapshot of that particular screen and then under we can go into configuration and, and upload that to a, a thumb drive or USB port and you can put that on your computer if needed. We also have a padlock symbol. So some of these parameters are locked. You need the, pad, the passcode to get in. So you would simply click on the padlock symbol and dial in the LNT password. I'm not going to do that yet. All right. Then lastly is a back arrow. Hit the back arrow, it'll bring us back to the previous screen. Up here is the, the demand. So right now the demand is off. So we do not have a call for heat or hot water. The burner state is in standby. If the burner was running, it would read run. If it was driving to pre-purge, it would read drive to pre-purge, uh, post-purge, etc. The firing rate currently is at zero RPMs and the fan speed is at zero RPMs. Again, that's because the boiler demand is off. So if the boiler was running at 25% of fire, uh, we would have an RPM reading here. All right. Down here, we have the inlet temperature. So we have an inlet sensor and an outlet sensor inside the boiler. So you'd be able to read the inlet temperature, the outlet temperature, the stack temperature, which is our flue temperature, domestic hot water call. So if we're doing domestic hot water off an indirect, it would either read the temperature uh, if you were using a sensor, or if you're using a mechanical aquastat, it would read closed or shorted, um, meaning that we're calling for domestic hot water. <clears throat> we can control 4 to 20, so if your application requires 4 to 20, and you're giving it a 4 to 20 signal, it would read what the signal is internally. Right now we're set up for local. Um, this is going to be a standalone application uh, without 4 to 20. We also have the outdoor temperature, so we strongly recommend you use outdoor reset uh, or the outdoor sensor that ships loose with this boiler. Once you land that, it would give us the temperature of the outdoor sensor. Then we have the flame signal. So while the boiler is running, we can look at the flame, what the flame signal is. Down on the bottom, we have some more information such as configure, operation, diagnostics, and details. So we're going to go through a couple of those. Uh, again, right now we're going to set the boiler up as a standalone single boiler application. So to get there, we click configure. All right. We have a few line items up top. We also have a slide rail on the side. All right. So there are many options in here. However, for a single boiler, we're only going to use the first five lines. Okay. System identification and access, which already should be reading one. Central heat set for to get into the set points. Outdoor reset and DH, DHW, which is domestic hot water and warm weather shutdown. So, we'll start by system ID and access. Click on that, use your slide rail, scroll down, and the Modbus addresses here should both read one, okay? If they don't, click on them and change your address back to one, all right? So in this case, I'll use the example of, hold on, I'll use the example of uh, two. All right, and what I want to do is bring it back to one. I'm going to use my down arrow, click OK. All right, so now I'm going to use the back arrow to get back to the previous screen. Next is the central heat 
configuration. So we're going to click on central heat configuration. Central heat should be enabled. Okay. Demand switch should be stat terminal. And central heat is priority over lead lag. That's no uh, when we get into lead lag. Um, but this is this standalone boiler, so all we want to make sure is that central heat is enabled. We're going to hit our right hand arrow here, and that's going to bring us to our set point screen. Set points are all defaulted coming out of the factory at 120 degrees. So, and we don't know the application it's going in. So, hypothetically, let's say you needed a 160 degree uh, central heat set point. Uh, or 180 on the coldest day of the year. Click on the 120 and that's going to bring up another screen. To the right hand side of that screen you'll see it reads 55 to 190. That's the range in which you can set your set point. All right. So hypothetically I'm going to choose 160. Uh, let's state that it's a fan coil application. We want roughly 160 degrees going to that fan coil. Press clear and plug in 160. Once you set points on the screen, press OK. And that brings us back to the set point screen again. Now we're showing 160 on the screen. The differential, so you've got a five, de off, five degree off differential, so the off point becomes 165, and the on differential is five degrees, uh, so the on point would be 155. So that would be our, our range. Okay. Next I'm going to hit the back arrow and come down and choose Outdoor Reset. Okay, Outdoor Reset should be enabled. If not, click on it and enable it. Okay. Now we're going to set our temperature, so our max outdoor temperature. Um, that corresponds with our low water temperature. So for example, on a 50 degree or a 60 degree day, maybe we only need to supply 135, maybe we need lower. So for this example, for fan coil, uh, we'll say the low temp on fan coil is going to be 120. We'll change that in a minute. But we want 120 at roughly 55 degrees for this example. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to change that. So 55 degrees, click OK. And now I need to set my low water temperature. So I said 120. Click OK. So again, Anything above 55 degrees of outdoor air, we're only going to deliver 120 degrees. Okay? We had a central heat set point of 160, so that means at 5 degrees or below, we'll now deliver 160. Depending on the application, you may find that that's too low. Just go ahead in, clear it, and set it up. Okay? So depending if you've got well insulated uh, property, maybe it only needs to be at 15 degrees of outdoor air. All right, follow the manual and go in and you can set up your outdoor reset curve. So the last thing we want to talk about is the show line. When you click on show line, it'll actually show us the graph. So this is our outdoor temperature here. So at 55 degrees, if we follow this line across, we're only going to deliver 120 degrees. Okay, anything above 55 degree of outdoor air. At approximately 35 degrees, we would deliver 140. At 15 degrees or below of outdoor air, we will deliver 160. So that graph is, is a nice feature to watch. Uh, if you don't like the, the set points at this point, click the back arrow, come back in and set it up differently. So for example, the minimum outdoor temperature, we can click on that and we can now elevate that to 20 degrees. Click OK, press show line and you'll see at 20 degrees of outdoor air or below we're at 60, 160. I will also change this, I'm going to change this for the example to 50 degrees. We go back to show line, now you can see your curve. So that's it, very simple. And from there we're going to go back to the home screen. If you have any technical questions, please contact a factory. There you can ask for product support. That number is one 800 900 9276. Thank you.